Welcome to Quant Minds. I'm joined today by Vivek Anand from Deutsche Bank AG. Vivek, thank you so much for coming today. Thanks, Lily. So I wanted to get, get back to basics with you about sentiment analysis. Why is it such an important data to use in quant finance and investing? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me. Uh, so sentiment um, analysis, in my view, is very um, important tool for investing uh, because it gives you an idea of overall uh, mood and sentiment of market participants. In other words, it helps you to gauge the psychological emotional factor of uh, market, uh, which basically influences the prices. Um, so there are many reasons why it is very important. So first is uh, early detection of market trends. So uh, sentiment analysis can help you to detect shift in the market trend before it is reflected in the prices. So by monitoring your uh, uh, social media news, um, financial news and other uh, data, you can understand where uh, which asset is, uh, is, uh, is trending and hence you can act accordingly. Second benefit which I see is um, short-term value investing or contrarian investing, where uh, it helps, sentiment analysis help you to understand which uh, asset is overvalued or which asset is undervalued based on looking its extreme of a sentiment. So if, so when sentiment is very high for a particular asset, uh, which means that it is becoming overvalued and, and hence the investors can gain advantage by going short that particular asset and just do the opposite when sentiment is very negative for a particular asset. Uh, third, I think it's very important uh, uh, is on risk management side because uh, uh, sentiment analysis help us to uh, explain or catch the driver or capture the driver which is not being um, captured yet by the market, traditional market factors. And hence, it gives you that extra edge in doing your risk management. Last but not the least, I would say um, sentiment is very um, important for uh, alpha capture in, in, or in other words, making uh, uh, systematic s strategies. Uh, and it can be for both alpha uh, capturing on its own. And the second thing is about augmenting the existing factor to make those strategies more efficient. So that's, I, that's why I think sentiment analysis has a very uh, important place in today's world of investing. And over the years, it has evolved so much. Uh, what are the latest updates in this area then? Yeah, so I think sentiment analysis obviously has seen a lot of improvements over the past uh, year, especially past two, three years. So one and few, I will take some example. So one is uh, contextualized word embeddings. Uh, what I mean by this is that the traditional word embeddings like word to vec and so on, they don't capture the actual context of a word in a in a sentence or in or or in of document. The the new contextualized word embeddings like BERT and uh, and GPT, they understand or they capture this context of word in a particular sentence or in a document as well. So that basically has enhanced the. Uh, the sentiment, uh, uh, um, the classification. The second advance I see is uh, is emotion detection. So generally, the sentiment in, uh, analysis has been seen as a way to capture the the positive or negative sentence. But now it has moved to emotions detection, where one can understand the uh, the greed, the fear, the happiness or sadness. That basically is a new thing. Third thing is around uh, I would say. Uh, uh, multimodal sentiment analysis, where you move away from the traditional text-based analysis to include data such as images, audio, video, and so on. So that gives you a comprehensive uh, uh, idea of sentiment. So these are the, I think, advancement I would say uh, uh, has we have seen in sentiment analysis modeling. So all sorts of alternative data are being included in this uh, sentiment analysis nowadays. Uh, but the one thing that you mentioned as well, which was um, chat GPT, so large language models, what is their impact on sentiment analysis and investment nowadays? Yeah, so that's a very good question because um, we have seen uh, the advent of uh, uh, these large language models uh, since November last year with uh, uh, chat GPT from OpenAI and, and, and then Google Bard, uh, Bard from Google and so on. 
Um, so what I see that uh, what they have brought to the table is, first of all, is the improved accuracy. So now uh, uh, the sentiment uh, um, analysis, uh, if we using this large language model, they are they capture the uh, the, the relationship between the the words and the phrases better. They capture the nuance of sentiment better, and and hence they and that's why they. Uh, uh, they able to do the prediction better. So, in other words, it has brought, it has improved the accuracy of sentiment analysis and its prediction. That's the first. Second thing I would say is the interpretability, which means that uh, now we can understand why model is taking that decision or why certain classification in sentiment has been done by that model. So, so we so we are able to understand or interpret the model better with these large language models and uh, and in other words we can say that uh, this the the tag of black box is getting away from these improvements and uh, um, so in other words just to summarize here that the, the improvement in large language model has brought the sentiment analysis to more accurate more robust and more reliable and that basically reflects in investing as well so that's why you take or capture more efficient uh, um, uh, alpha and also helps in more uh, efficiently managing your risk as well. So I think that's the, uh, the, uh, the advantage which these improvements have brought to sentiment analysis. So lots of advantages, but do you see it also hindering uh, the investment process? Uh, are there any challenges in this space? Um, that's correct. I mean, of course, like any other thing, uh, there are some negative side as well, right? And one of the uh, the hinder which it can bring to the sentiment analysis, especially the generative AI, is that uh, uh, it can, uh, one can generate fake news, for example, or fake videos or fake images. And that, if goes into the sentiment analysis model, that um, shift or make some twist in your sentiment, right, which can be responsible for making bad investment de de uh, decision and maybe it can lead to some large losses as well. So, so that is important. So in other words, it's a function how we use these generative AI and uh, sophisticated method. method. Uh, if they are not properly managed, then it can bring that problem. But however, we know that it has a lot of advantage than the disadvantages. So as I mentioned that one can, it can help you to generate a lot of synthetic data on which your sentiment analysis model can be trained on. It can generate a lot of factors in which you can understand your strategies, how they would do, and and uh, and and test whether it, they are efficient or not. So just so, in other words, it's a function of how we use this data. So it has both pros and cons, but uh, it's uh, onus lies on the investor community. It's an exciting time for them as well, then. Yeah. So I just wanted to conclude with uh, your involvement at Quantminds International this year, which yeah. is just around the corner. What are you most excited to talk about and learn about yeah. at the event? Yes. So, um, so first of all, I'm really looking forward to attending uh, that conference, the Quantmind conference. And uh, so first thing I would like to learn about how investors and portfolio managers are utilizing uh, these uh, improvements in lang large language model, especially GPT and, and Google Bard and so on in their investment decision. In other words, I want to see the hype which we have created, uh, which we've seen in AI is real, how far it is real. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is about what we want to discuss is that, so in that conference, we will be discussing or talk about one of the popular investing area, uh, which is uh, in uh, thematic investing where we will present a framework for utilizing AI in identifying the emerging trends or emerging themes and how to build the basket which basically target that theme using public securities. So it's not about building a theme for AI but using AI to identify the new themes and then make a basket of public securities to track that theme. So that's our, uh, uh, the talk will be. Uh, in this conference. Wonderful. So lots of things to look forward to. Vivek, thank you so much for joining yeah. me today. Yeah, thanks Lily for uh, having me and uh, it has been really a pleasure to come here and looking forward to uh, attending the event. Mm -hmm.